so we, we've got sort of halfway through an interview without actually mentioning the, the, the C word, um, COVID. And you, you came to Welsh National Opera in July last year. Um, and we're obviously planning ahead because opera takes a long time to plan. I mean, how much of... Uh, well, tell us first of all, how has COVID affected uh, your business? Well, the planning, first of all. Um, I was on the Opera Europa video conference, and I have to say every single company in Europe is going through the same things, and that is the f long-term planning is completely out of the window. Uh, partly because, if at all possible, we want to postpone rather than cancel. It means that uh, you know the artists who have been out of work now for nine or ten months, at least they've got something in the diary to, to look forward to. Um, and that means, of course, everything shuffles along. So, uh, you know, pl opera plans, which are normally two or three years uh, set in advance, have all been thrown out of the window. Um, and even on a short-term basis, you're ready to go and then you're told the theatres are closed and you have to go back again. Um, so, you know, that doesn't help. But also, it's not helped by our touring model. That is, we get three shows together in a quite short band uh, and then have a long performance run of all three. So if the return to work chimes in with our rhythms, we're OK. But if it comes, if we say, OK, you can go into the theatre and sudden tomorrow and there's two weeks of a tour left, well, we can't get it ready in time. Um, so we're taking a view now to a gunning for autumn of 21 as the time when we're going to be back. And, and it seems a long way away. And of course, we're going to have things ready to go, but we have no certainty. And that's been very, very hard. It's been very hard to motivate um, about 125 people of our staff, the orchestra, chorus, technicians. But it's very easy to forget the technical crews as well, um, just to keep them going through a period where we know we can't give them any work. And what, what do you think it's done to audiences? Do you think, um, have you managed to, to keep your audiences engaged or are you worried about whether they'll come back? What's, what, what are your feelings about? Uh, it, it's hard b um, because uh, we, within the, the data laws of the UK, we don't have the sort of knowledge and direct communication with audiences in the way you would in America. Um, obviously our donors we keep in contact, we have lots of Zoom events um, put on especially for them, which have a fantastic attendance, um, but it's very hard, and so the big question is, uh, will people have forgotten us? And that sounds a bit melodramatic, but it's hard enough when you're only visiting a, a city two times a year uh, to keep that contact going at the best of times. And if it's been a year and a half when people's you know, entertainment options have shifted, Assuming that everyone's going to flood back, it would be very rash indeed. Um, in terms of whether they want to come back, you know, there's been a lot of talk about um, a nervous return because of the, of the virus. Um, I think we're much more optimistic that there be, there's been a lot of evidence that people are coming back um, willingly. And there's no way we're going to be at full audiences for a while yet. I mean, that, so. Well, what's your feeling about that? And when, when do you think we will be back from up to up to strength? So. Uh, put it this way, we're budgeting our autumn 21 on the basis of about 80 to 90 percent of what we would have been. Uh, and and we do that talking with all the uh, to all, all the other organisations as well. So that's the sort of feeling. Um, and I think we did that budget before the vaccine came on the horizon. So that will only help matters. Um, but so I'm not as pessimistic of, of everyone staying away until the virus is, is completely gone. I think people, you know, people have gone shopping again uh, as, soon as, um, as soon as restrictions have been lifted. So I, I think you must allow people uh, a little bit of their own sense of their own security and, and to make a judgment call on it. But, um, but we're not going to be back, you know, at, at full houses any time within a good year or so. So we have to make decisions accordingly, be it the amount of productions we mount or indeed our the budget scale for those shows in alignment with its, its, its income. And will, and will you be, I mean, uh, presuming that we won't suddenly wake up and, and, the, and the virus will have gone away, um, will you be thinking about how to perform safely, how, yeah, yeah and, and, and what sort of measures are sort of in your mind? Well, so we are, uh, we have two productions which we've got 
lined up which to intend to take out in spring when we can. Uh, one of which is Barbara Seville. We are aiming to stage it as, as much as we can, um, allowing that we, you know, we have to play to a certain distance. So that work is going on, is being mapped out. Um, the other thing we're doing is Trovatore. Now we feel with the large chorus numbers and that, that's a no-go in any time soon to be done in, in a conventional way. So we'll have a much more inventive way to, to that, probably with a static chorus, uh, allowing an acting space where there's enough room for that distancing and obviously orchestra separated out in the pit. Um, it's remarkable actually, uh, we talk about you know, two, three meter distances and just recently we've had our full chorus on the stage of St. David's Hall, the extended stage, and 36 people fill that stage. And it's a large space at three meters. It is extraordinary how much space that takes per individual. Um, and it's quite an eye opener when you think, okay, there's no way that lot can, can act close together uh, with a degree of safety. And the other thing you know, we have to remember is this, that um, obviously it's a tragic irony that singing and wind playing has become a dangerous occupation, things which bring joy to people. But we also need to consider the health of those people as well, that this is a disease which can have lasting effects on the respiratory system, and that is people's livelihood. So I cannot put them in danger just in order to get something on where the long-term effects on those performers could be profound on their career. So there's, there's two sides of the coin. It's not just our audience, it's actually the safety of our um, performers and their, their careers.